So while that lazy bum's working in the background, I thought I'd talk a little bit about drills. I've had a number of people ask me what kind of drill they should get. Is a pneumatic drill required or can they do it with a cordless drill? Can they do it with a, a corded drill? What do they need? Well, if you recall from my early videos, I started doing everything with a simple cordless drill like this. Um, works well, uh, you know, it's got some weight to it, but uh, really I found the biggest problem with this guy is these little batteries over time, they don't hold their charge, they wear out, and you're constantly swapping batteries. And if you have three or four batteries, this probably works just fine. This drill did the majority of the holes in the empennage. Uh, I just decided after a while that I wanted to get something with a little more power. The issue I think with these particular drills is they only go so fast, right? They, they have a top speed. Uh, torque is not a problem. Uh, it's got a high and low torque setting and you can get other drills like impact driver type drills and other stuff. Those will work just fine. But really I think the issue is the weight. This particular drill is well balanced. There's good weight on bottom, good weight on top. So it kind of sits in your hand just fine. And so I found this drill is actually really well, uh, well done. But just keep that in mind that you're gonna be sitting there drilling thousands of holes and after a while it kind of lugs on your arm a little bit and batteries are always an issue. So the second drill most people ask about is a pneumatic drill um, and this is a little husky pneumatic drill. I got it at Home Depot for like 80 bucks I think. I think. Um, and it's much lighter than either the corded or, or the cordless drill. The problem with this guy is the hose. Um, it, it, it's loud, first of all, and uh, I've intentionally got my compressor turned off because that was enough to make the compressor kick on. These are useful, but they're incredibly inefficient. Uh, that's the big problem with them. When it comes to efficiency, pneumatic drills, not efficient. So. Um, your compressor is going to be running always, unless unless you have just a really big compressor with a huge storage capacity. Uh, your compressor is going to run. If you have a little three gallon little pancake, you know the the seventy nine dollar jobby that you get at Home Depot, forget it. That thing will never stop running. I mean, it, uh, two seconds of of drilling and it's it's kicking back on. They're just inefficient. So that was the big problem I had with these drills was that honestly, they're lighter, but then you got to lug this around and you could trip over it. And um, in the end, I don't think they, they're not faster. Uh, they're not significantly faster. They're louder. They require another part, you know, another piece, the, the compressor. And I, I don't think you need it. I mean, I just, I have yet to find a reason where this was absolutely necessary. So your mileage may vary, but do you need a pneumatic drill? I don't think so. Um, finally, I have my good old DeWalt corded drill. This drill I've had since the early 90s. Still works just fine. Uh, it is much quieter than the pneumatic drill. The issue is it's heavier. Um, it's, it's a little bulkier. You know, it's longer uh, than this guy. It's about the same weight, really. Uh, and again, you've got a cord, so you've got something you can lug around and this cord's all frayed down here. Like I said, this is old, but this is all you need. Now the downside to this is when you're doing thousands of holes after a while, it just gets heavy. Even though this thing doesn't weigh that much, it does get heavy. They make really small little palm drills that I bet would be really useful for doing lots and lots of holes. I don't have one of those, but I've thought about getting one. They're intentionally, they're light, they're small. They're not meant for heavy duty drilling. They're just meant to poke a hole, which since you're 99% of the holes you're drilling are re-drilling a hole that's already there, those would be perfect. So I, I, I've thought about getting one of those. I just don't have one yet. Um, finally, of course, I have a monster drill like this for doing woodwork and whatnot. Uh, I brought this out here just to show you that you really don't need this. So there you go. That's my opinion on drills. Uh, do you need a pneumatic drill? No, I don't think so. Uh, they work, they make pneumatic palm drills, so maybe that would be a good idea. But again, the inefficiency is 
enough of a pain that I think going with an electric drill is better. Corded drills versus cordless drill. I think a cordless drill is more convenient in that you don't have the cord, but uh, quite often they will be slightly heavier. And of course you have the battery problem. Get lots of batteries if you're gonna stick with a uh, cord cordless drill. So that's it. That's my uh, little, little bit of uh, information about drills. I hope that answers your question. Thanks. He's not done yet. An addendum to all that, I would say, is to get good drill bits and don't be afraid to use them. Drill bits uh, are a lot like sandpaper. Uh, you probably know people that use sandpaper uh, until it's literally just paper. Don't do that, you know, use, use up your sandpaper. It's meant to be used up. Same thing with drill bits, use up your drill bits. Except that, you know, they're going to be uh, destroyed as you use them. And honestly, like, my Ace Hardware has number 30 and number 40 drill bits for $2.50 each. Just buy a bunch of them. So in the rest of the video in the background, I've been working on the aileron. Uh, specifically, I'm working on the little stiffeners, the little ribs that are... Uh, put on the skin to keep its shape. And there's a lot of cutting and forming of these stiffeners. Uh, that's what you see me doing here now. And I thought I'd show you exactly how I go about doing that. Each individual stiffener is actually cut from a angle aluminum piece that is sent pre-drilled with holes and notches cut out for you, indicating exactly what the final shape of the piece will look like, so long as you understand how to interpret those notches. A good rule of thumb is to remember that you're cutting from notch to notch, and you don't actually want the notch to be part of the final product, which quite often means you're going to continue past the notch until you run out of material. Here you can see an image of exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the upper rib is basically done. The lower one is marked and ready to be cut. Uh, due to the reflectivity of the metal, it looks like it's marked all up, but it's actually only marked uh, on the side without the holes, but it, I know it looks both have holes because, well, mirrors. So here I am trying to give you a little bit of a better view of how I go about doing this. This was really awkward, by the way, to have the camera between my head and <laughs> the cutting surface. Uh, this is, by the way, something you will need. You will need a good bandsaw. Uh, I say good bandsaw, yeah, this is a cheap bandsaw, but you'll need something uh, and you're gonna use it a lot get a good aluminum blade But anyways, I'm going from notch to notch like I said and I'll go past the notch uh, Cutting off all the excess after the notch because it is supposed to be uh, Smooth and even and just you know mark up all your parts and stay within the lines and you know There you go. See I went past the notch there and it works works nicely this, by the way, is like a Ryobi bandsaw. You can get them at Home Depot for $120, I think. And again, you are going to use it. Get several blades, too, because they do get dull. And finally, deburring. This is uh, one of those things that you're going to be doing throughout the entire plane is deburring parts. I'm using a Ryobi here with the 4-inch, uh, I'm sorry, 5-inch uh scotch bright wheel. I've actually got one on either side. You can see I've got the housing removed on the right side so that I can have access to the side and uh, more of a flat surface. Whereas the wheel on the left side, it's it's got the little plate where I can kind of rub stuff against it uh, on a flat surface. And I kind of, I've got it sort of curved a little bit. Uh, like I've, I've worked it so that I can get around curves on the side uh, where I'm working right there right now. But uh, this is something you're going to do to each part. It's time consuming. Um, I think in total there is 32 of these little guys uh, for the two ailerons. So, you know, it's one of those things you get out there and you're just like, ugh. Um, but, you know, don't skip a step. Don't try to eyeball it when you're doing your cutting. Go ahead and mark them and take the time to do it right. You know, if you're gonna do it, do it right. And of course, I'm, I'm going through and I feel, you know, if I feel any burr or I feel anything that feels sharp, I continue to put it on there. And I do this with every single one of them. Um, this kind of attention to detail, I think will go a long way in the long run. So there you go. 
And finally, I wanted to say thank you very much to everybody. I really appreciate everything you guys doing. Your comments, your emails, your likes and all that. It really keeps me honest and keeps me motivated and makes me keep coming out here and doing this. Uh, and finally, I kind of have to say, uh, I have to ask if you would, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not. Believe it or not, the way uh, YouTube works, that actually helps rankings and ratings. So there you go. See you next time. Thanks, guys.